Hello, I'm making this video because I uh, wanted to show how I do agar for growing mushrooms. Um, one of my friends uh, told me that he was interested in growing some mushrooms, so I just wanted to show some of the, the basics, and I'll talk about this stuff briefly. The first is uh, working somewhere that's clean, so you want to keep your area clean that you're working on. Um, I've recently started using this stuff just to clean countertops and things before I work. Uh, it says that it kills bacteria for up to a day. Whether or not that's true, I, I don't know, but it seems to work pretty good. These $1 spray bottles from Walmart are pretty good for holding just some common cleaning stuff like bleach. The most common cleaner that I use is isopropyl alcohol. But last year uh, with COVID, we were kind of at a sh shortage, so I, I used a lot more bleach. Uh, but I guess the most important thing to remember is, especially if, if you're working inside of a still air box, try not to get your bleach and your, your alcohol mixed together because you'll get some nasty gas that comes out of there. Uh, so anyways, now that you got a spot that you've cleaned off and you're, and you're wanting to work, here's some different containers that you can use. Um, I'm showing these four together because these are my least favorite to use, but they are definitely still able to be used. Um, these big Ziploc containers. That, so the reason I don't like them is, is simply due to the size. This is an old one with, with actually agar and some old mycelium in it, so it's just an old one. So you can tell I haven't taken the best of care of this one. But due to its size, that's the reason I don't like it. The bigger the, the container, the harder they are to store. Um, but the pros of this is they hold up really well inside of a pressure cooker. So if, if you are doing uh, no pour, where you, you know, you pour your agar in this container and uh, then you pressure cook it, you can stack like two or three, probably just two in a, in a small pressure cooker and then maybe two more on the other side. Whereas with these smaller ones, uh, like the glass ones I'll show, you can stack a lot more of those and get a lot more agar work done uh, for every cook. Um, when I was first starting out with agar, these were my, these were my go-to. Uh, these little plastic lids, that they fit the same jars as like a grain jar, same lid, you know. So these, they're just handy because uh, size-wise, you know, they, they're, they're shorter so you can fit more in your pressure cooker. Um, they're not quite as big around, but they still will uh, do a good job. These glad containers, size-wise, they're good. They're smaller than the big Ziplocs. The problem with these is even though this is PP5, which is important to remember to, to make sure it's PP5, just it's, it's kind of flimsy plastic, and the pressure inside the pressure cooker a lot of times will cause these to implode and, and crush. The plastic you know, will will still be okay, but it'll just be all disfigured when you pull it out. Now, you can drill a couple holes in here and cover it with tape, um, and that somewhat helps with the equal, equalizing the pressure on the inside and the outside of the container, but it's just a lot more steps for these little these little glad containers. If you're gonna do the the type where type of agar pour where you're putting them inside your pressure cooker. Um, now, my dad grows, or not grows, he uh, keeps bees, and so he has a lot of these containers. And you can see I've never used it for agar, but it used to have honey in it. And I was thinking that, you know, a jar like that, if I was going to use something in this neighborhood uh, starting out, you know, I'd be more wanting to use a jar like this than this glad plastic one. And then lastly, for, for this group, these are condiment cups. You can get these for super cheap. I use them mostly now because I, I mushroom hunt and, and I keep a little agar in there and I take, uh, you can tell that one's actually bacterial. There's some bacteria down there, but that's a that's a, uh, a clone from a tissue sample of a wild uh, oyster mushroom that I found out in the woods. So <clears throat> I hope to clean it up and uh, maybe grow some mushrooms based on a uh, tissue sample of one I found in the wild. But anyways, these condiment cups are super cheap. You can get 250 of these for uh, like 10 to 20 dollars, but they will not go in a pressure cooker. They will just crush and uh, not work. So with these types of 
agar containers, you have to sterilize the whole jar of, of agar separately and then pour these inside your still air box or in, in front of a, a flow unit. So, um, anyways, th these would be, these are one of my favorites of, of this neighborhood just because size-wise they're super short. I'll try to get closer to show the, so you can stack two of these for every one of those. And, uh, you know, th these are handy little cups when you're starting out. But now I want to talk about my favorite containers to use, which are these glass petri dishes and uh, I have been able to find these for about two dollars a piece so each one is about two dollars a piece I've seen some Pyrex that are very nice looking but they're very expensive so if you go on Amazon and you look around you can find these these glass uh, petri dishes which are reusable uh, you can put them in the pressure cooker with no problems um, you can find them for as low as between one and two dollars a piece um, and these are my go-to now. Um, ones that I didn't mention are are the dishes that are just like this, but they're made out of plastic. But you can't ever put them in the pressure cooker, so you have to throw them away after every use. And uh, I did use a lot of those, but I tried to get away from throwing away so much plastic. So I, I started moving to the to the glass. And I'm going to show these uh, with the agar pour I'm going to do today. Here's an older... Uh, transfer that I made uh, just to show that I am growing mushrooms in them. Um, so on to the next thing, uh, your agar recipe. Um, I'm going to show some of the agar stuff here and you know you need a scale because you got to measure it out. I do suggest maybe getting, this is a cheap nine dollar scale. It works but I don't like it. <laughs> but it's just up to you. Um, so the first ingredient for agar is uh, you, you want to add water. Now you can use tap water. Um, I'm lazy and 16.9 fluid ounces which is your pretty common sized drinking water cup that you get for drinking water bottle from uh, the grocery store is 500 milliliters. So that's the first part of your recipe is 500 milliliters. Conveniently the, the water in that is exactly that so I use that quite a bit. Um, well we'll talk about the tape at the end of the recipe. So I'll put that aside. Uh, agar powder. You don't need all three of these types. These are just three different types that I've gotten. Um, one second, I gotta adjust my pressure cooker. Okay. Sorry, if the pressure cooker is loud in the background, if I'm working on stuff, I always have the pressure cooker running, so it's inevitable. Um, so anyways, agar powder, 10 to $20. You can find it on Amazon. There's nothing special about these that I'm showing. You can get uh, pre-mixed where it comes with nutrients mixed into the agar, specially designed for, for mushrooms, but I like to mix the nutrients myself. So here's the nutrient. This is malt extract, light malt extract. Um, I've experimented with some different stuff. I also uh, brew beer, so I've been kind of experimenting with some, uh, some different nutrients to add to the agar. Because agar itself doesn't really have a lot of nutrients. So a lot of times you add some form of nutrients uh, to, for the agar plates in the form of light malt extract. Uh, people, uh, you know, you can use potatoes and make dextrose, uh, potato dextrose. There's, there's a lot of different uh, nutrients that you can add. You also don't even have to add nutrients. A lot of times if you have a dirty agar plate, so say that you had a you know, this was loaded with contamination, or, or this one, actually, this clone uh, that I took from the wild, this is a good example, because undoubtedly this was going to have contamination in it. So, to, to slow down the contamination and, and focus on being able to see more clearly the mycelium, all that is is water and agar. There's no nutrients in that at all, and that's just called water agar. Um, another option is grain water, and this is my least favorite. I hate grain water. Uh, instead of using regular water and mixing it with agar and malt, uh, you can use grain water. And, and you get grain water when you make your grain jars. So that in another video I might show how to make these grain jars. And this is wild bird seed. But basically you, uh, you hydrate your grains before you uh, add mycelium to it. And the water that's left over after you hydrate your grains is left in this 
you know, I, you can save it and use it as nutrients for your agar plates. The reason I don't like it is because I have no idea how much nutrients is, is in there. Um, if I add five grams of this, I know I have five grams of nutrients. So the next time, if I want to adjust my uh, my recipe, it's it's easy to do so. But you have no idea how many nutrients you know you're adding to your agar. And lastly, this isn't even really necessary, but I like to add some food coloring to my agar plates just to spice it up and make it cool. Um, so anyways, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show how agar is made now. Uh, let's see if I can prop this foam up in a way. Okay, so I've already taken the water and I got it heating up in a, in a pot over on the stove and when we get there I'll, I'll show that. So my recipe is 10 grams of agar. I like to wait till that water is heating up because what you'll find when you dump the agar into the into the 500 milliliters of water is that it has a tendency to clump up and not want to break apart and, so, and that can be kind of a pain. It's not a big deal, but it just makes the stirring part easier. Um, so we have 10 grams of that. Let me make sure I have something to stir it with. Okay, and so now we're going to add the, this to the uh, to the 500 milliliters of water. So here you have, I have my uh, my water's just about to boil. I'm going to increase the temperature so it gets a little bit hotter than it is right now. 